is XFC 50. We behold the gathering of Titans, each a master of their craft, each with fire in their eyes, yearning for glory that echoes through eternity. They come not just to fight, but to etch their names in the annals of history, to turn sweat and blood into a legacy that will never fade. This is more than a battle. It's a ballet of brutality. And so, as the world watches with bated breath, we embark on this journey together. Welcome to an evening of unmatched intensity. Welcome to the spectacle of the ages. Welcome to XFC 50. There is no city quite like Lakeland, Florida. A vibrant community that'll always inspire your zest for life. Activities for everyone, no matter what you love to do. Nature walks, family-friendly parks, entertaining shows, intriguing museums, and incredible restaurants for every palate. Lakeland also offers special events that you'll remember forever, which is why XFC has chosen to be revitalized right here. World-class mixed martial arts right in your backyard. Lakeland, Florida, a fun place to visit and a perfect place to live. You're getting a bird's eye view of the RP Funding Center in gorgeous Lakeland, Florida. New beginnings bring about electric energy, limitless potential, and a powerful motivation for all involved. So you can call it a comeback if you want, but we are calling it a resurgence. Extreme Fighting Championship has been reborn and it's back in the spotlight as we proudly welcome you to XFC 50. I'm Johnny LaQuasto. Thank you for joining us live on In Demand and on Triller TV. And tonight, you're about to be a fan of XFC all over again as we have a card stacked from top to bottom full of fighters who are dead set on having their hand raised, having their stock raised, and becoming your new favorite fighter. But like I said, to be reborn, to have a triumphant return, it takes a whole village of individuals, including this man here. He is the chairman of the board of Extreme One Entertainment, Mr. Jeff Lambert. Come on in, sir. Pleasure to meet you. Welcome. We are finally here. The work has been done. We're at the RP Funding Center. How does it feel? It's awesome. This is so exciting to see everybody show up. It's, it's going to be a great fights, great night. We're fired up. Absolutely. Now, you've done a lot over the course of your career. You've worn a, worn a lot of hats, whether it be automotive or education or aerospace. What led you to mixed martial arts? Everyone loves sport. Everyone loves action and sport is universal and so we, we were so excited to be able to move into this position take extreme one entertainment get the xfc and bring it to the fans well speaking of fans and speaking of bringing things to the next level it doesn't end after tonight we have a lot more planned for the xfc fans absolutely so we're the next generation of mma and we need to showcase that next generation the, the fighter that has the opportunity to go to do the biggest and greatest things in the world and so tonight is just the beginning uh, uh, May 31st we're going to be in Detroit in the Masonic Temple it's a killer auditorium it's a killer venue old school fight in Detroit as part of the Detroit Grand Prix and so we're super fired up about that we're back here in Lakeland Florida July 12th and then we will go international this fall. So more to come, but a regular schedule of fight in 24, 25, 26 in the future. You heard it from the man himself, May 31st in Detroit, July 12th back here in Lakeland, Florida, and more dates to come. But without further ado, the lights are on, the cage is open. I'm gonna kick it out of my broadcast colleagues. Yeah, that's right, Ronnie Duncan, and of course, the great Jessica Aguilar. Well, thanks a lot, Johnny. I am Ronnie Duncan. Oh. I am sitting down here, and I'm excited. I am turned on because this is not the takeover. It's more like the makeover. It's a new sensation, and it's like that friend moving into the neighborhood all again, but this time some new toys. I'm speaking of the XFC, and right here in Lakeland, Florida, we are ready. Joining me tonight for the broadcast is a lady you better know. You better know all about her. If you don't know, you better ask somebody or just Google her. You look up UFC. You look up Bellator. She is a fighting angel. Jessica Algalo, girl, it is so nice to have you here. And I gotta say one thing to you. How excited are you about this new lane that has been opened 
for mixed martial arts fighters all across the world. Well, first of all, Ronnie, thank you so much for the kind introduction. I'm so excited to be joining here on the Comeback for Extreme Fighting Championship and honored to be broadcasting alongside yourself, Brian and Johnny. And I'm gonna tell you, if you guys aren't ready, we're ready because these fights are gonna be stacked with excitement and talent. You talk about excitement and talent. Look, she wants to try to get out of the shot to make sure that she gets into the ring. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's take a look at our card. Now, of course, we've got some fights on the card, but I want to talk about four of the fights that we have on the card that are going to be extremely exciting because when you oh. talk about Twice. Hannah Cole taking on Tyde Garcia, whoo, girl, these two young ladies are ready. It's a catchweight fight, but when you talk about experience, inexperience, I think the drive, the will to win, will be the answer to this fight. I think these ladies are bringing it from, from start to finish. They're gonna bring fireworks. You just mentioned Hannah has, she's a UFC vet, and you have a, a newcomer who is hungry and wants the win. So fireworks, fireworks, fireworks. These ladies will bring it. All right, now, all week long, the lady that has been working with me has been telling me, pulling on my coat, Ronnie, the fight of the night is gonna be an all Mexican bang out Tell me what I'm talking about. You know, we have a few of these on the card, Ronnie, <laughs> but Sanchez and Salas, I mean, the, the nicknames say it all. The Matador, which is the killer, and the Cazador, which is the hunter. I can't say anymore. I mean, you're gonna see blood. They both bring Mexican blood, so or Mexican, you know, the culture in, in, into this fight. So they're looking for a war, and they're both looking for the win. You know, when I talk to Sanchez, he says, look out. He says, this is gonna be Mexican fight style, MMA. You got to see right here of XFC. Now let's talk about the ladies. It is Pearl Gonzalez. It is the name that is unanimous, and it is the name that everyone speaks of when you talk of the glory days past of the XFC. But remember, we're about doing this makeover, and she's about coming back and doing it well. But then there's Monica Medea, who happens to be her opponent. She says, hey, look, I'll come out of anything to get on the bucket list for Pearl Gonzalez. Ooh, I'm, that's the fight I'm looking for. I mean, that's another fight that could be the main event. They're, these ladies are ready to steal the show. You know, they're both brown belts in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Medina's first love was jiu-jitsu, and Pearl stays busy competing. Um, so, you know, they both want to bang. They're going to come out starting from the beginning. They're both very aggressive. So this also could be fight of the night. Bang, bang could be that thing, but then it's time for the heavyweight. The big boys, they're almost a half a ton of fun. I'm talking about Tim Johnson, Darian, Arby. Man, you are talking about two guys. And when you speak of Abby, he says, I've been there before with him. It was in Las Vegas. It was UFC training camp. We're talking about a veteran of Bellator. We're talking about a veteran of UFC. That's Tim Johnson. He ain't never scared. And again, like you said, these these guys, this is a heavyweight fight. So these guys, you don't want to blink for this fight. These guys bring a lot of power, and most of their finishes, most of 50% of their finishes are in the first round. So these guys, you don't want to blink for this fight. These guys bring a lot of power, and they both are hungry for the win. You don't want to blink. That means I've got to be like this the entire time for that fight. It's going to be a good time. That's what we have for you today. And you know, looking at our card, you can see that it is stacked from head to toe. And the lady inside the cage is going to give you the best night of the night. They say St. Louis. I say Detroit. She's just an international player. She is our cage announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for my friend and yours, right, Nico. Thank you, Jessica and Ronnie Slam and combat fans all over the world. We are live. Extreme Fighting Championships is thrilled to have you here with us today at the RP Funding Center right here in Lakeland, Florida, USA. XFC 50 is brought to you tonight by Pool Cat, Ticker, and Extreme One Entertainment. So what lies ahead? Lethally skilled mixed martial arts bouts all curated for our entertainment, all sanctioned by the Florida Athletic Commission. And to all of you watching live around the world on Triller TV, pay-per-view, and in demand, you are appreciated. So, right here, right now, if you're ready for the next generation of MMA, if you're ready for a resurgence, make some noise because you're in the place to be. This is XFC.
right now, ladies and gentlemen, our first attraction of the evening is scheduled for three rounds in the straw weight division. At this time, I need you to welcome to the blue corner, Rebecca Rotenberry. Here it is, Rebecca Rotenberry Extreme One Entertainment. And yes, we are bringing it to you. Ronnie Duncan along with Jessica Aguilar. Yes, Young sir. Young ladies are ready, are they not, Jessica? Yes, they are ready, and are you ready? Got to be ready, especially when you talk about this young lady, Rebecca, is from Birmingham, Alabama. And her story into MMA is very interesting. She happens to be a nurse, a nurse for neurology and a neurologist. Come on, you're talking about the study of the brain. It seems like it's an oxymoron, that it doesn't work, but it does. She says, I know my brain is intact. And if I have to send someone to the neurologist, it won't be me. That's, it's, it's amazing, it's just amazing. She says, you know, I don't wanna be a nurse anymore. I wanna be a fighter. And so she really loves this. You know, she previously has Amy fights in the Adam Wade division, which is 105, but uh, loves, loves the fight game and is willing to leave the operation room for the cage. In her corner will be Chris Connolly. They call her the Queen Bee. She fights out of the Spartan Fitness MMA in Birmingham, Alabama. And I asked her, I said, I got to ask you this question because I used to work in Huntsville, Alabama. Hello to my son and his wife. Yes, Joshua, we see you. And of course, Jones, we see you. And Danielle, you know your father-in-law loves you very much. Alabama is their home. And guess what, Josh? She's all about that roll tie. I was only kidding. She's real about War Eagle. <laughs> I thought I'd tease them because they are really Auburn fans. I mean, what a, a what a promotion to make a, a pro debut in XFC Fighting Championship. I mean, this is amazing. It's such an amazing opportunity for this, these new talents coming in. And uh, I mean, I, I wish I had something like this growing up in my career, you know, but I'm so happy why, for these ladies. And that's why I call it that new lane that is there for so many fighters here who have an opportunity to fight on a main stage. When you consider the overall production of what Lambert and the team have done at Extreme One Sports, it is so important. And now, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise and welcome to the cage, Kayla Strick. Now it's time for Kayla Stricker, and she is the young lady who says, before you go ahead and say, this is my pro debut, I've already dreamt my victory. She comes to us on Pace, Florida, right down the road, and she's only 5'2", but 114 pounds. She says, I pack a punch. And I love the nickname, the Bulldog. That's right. I mean, you know, these ladies are both hungry for their first professional win. Also, you know, over nine Emmy amateur fights. So she's excited to get in here. These are still young ladies. And again, I can't stress it enough how amazing it is to have a platform like the XFC. Well, they've come back for a good reason. And you can say MMA born again because that's exactly what they've done. But they've looked at the mistakes of the past and they have said to themselves, this is what we're going to do. But I think in talking to you, one of the, mo the main things to consider is when fighters say, it's how you treat me as a promotional team. And so far from the front to the end, the treatment has been star rated. You know, yes, that's very important. And it's like, it's like the saying, they say, you know, happy wife, happy life. You treat a fighter right, and they leave all the fight in the cage. So that's what a show wants, right? And I think that's what the XFC is bringing. I think it's about respect of the fighters. Absolutely. And when the fighters 100%. can have that kind of respect, that's what it's about. Look, she's in that ring. She's Kayla, in that look. cage. And Kayla is saying, I'm stomping for victory. Kayla looks ready. I mean, she, her ripped body, she looks, she looks like she's, she's ready for that victory. Let's go up to our cage announcer, the one, the only, Ryan Nico. 
All right, get excited, ladies and gentlemen. Our first live attraction of the evening is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the straw weight division. Our three judges scoring the bout cage side, Michael Tate, Eliseo Rodriguez, and Jason Granier. Our third man in charge of the action, David Baggett. And now, we introduce our fighters. In the blue corner, Tonight, she enters the cage making her professional debut. The 27-year-old stands at five feet, two inches tall. She scaled 116 pounds. Representing Birmingham, Alabama, here is Rebecca Queen B. Rotenberry. And now, fighting out of the red corner, she also makes her professional debut tonight. This 29-year-old stands at five feet, two inches tall. She weighs 114.2 pounds. She represents Pace, Florida. Make some noise for Kayla, the Bulldog Stricker. And our third man in the ring, David Baggett, gives further instruction. All right, ladies, went over the rules on the back. You guys, do you have any questions? All right, touch gloves and come back. Thank you. All right, both of these young ladies are making their pro debut, Jessica Aguilar and, of course, yours truly, Ronnie Duncan. You see the tail of the tape. Only a two-year age difference between the two, and they both stand at 5'2". But when you speak of the reach, it goes to Rottenberry at 65 inches. That's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens. The first round of your first fight you can only do this one time in life as a pro debut. It's for all to see right here on the XFC. And that is the bell for round number one. It is a five minute round, as you would see. What do you like about the dimensions of this cage? Is it too small or too big? No, this, is, this cage is perfect. Uh, you know, having a smaller cage makes for more action, quicker action. Uh, less space to move around, but great combinations. You know, Kayla looking for those lo leg leg kicks early in, in the fight. Rottenberry almost came through with an overhand right, but now she's got caught up against it. Nice. The but yet she's been able to reverse it and take it toward an advantage. But those oh, punches are coming. Kayla. Stricker is coming and striking hard. Stricker has a really good head positioning. She lost it now. She, nice. Got turned over by Rottenberry. One thing there. you can look forward to. Nice knees. With two young ladies early in their career, pro debut, the anxieties, and of course the opportunities to make mistakes, but how can you overcome them? Oh, Kayla looking for that stand-up guillotine, and I think she has it. This is a this is this is a dangerous position for this is a da da dangerous place for Rottenberry. What she needs to do is is turn. She needs a turn to defend that. If not, this is she can pull into the guard and close that guard and, and finish that, that guillotine. Nice, there's nice good head Turn positioning. Things Turning things around, good defense. Both looking for a good head position there. Coming to you live from Lakeland, Florida, the RP Funding Center. And this is a new debut, a new kind of you for the XFC. Nice. What Rob Rottenberger needs to do here is turn, turn around from the cage because Stricker here is having good head positioning uh, on her, not allowing her to move. Looking for that takedown Stricker here. She needs to turn, nice, there you go. Good turnaround from, from Rottenberger. You see the head movement right there by Kayla, and of course the high kick, and the low leg kick, and yet she is still punching in bunches straight ahead and striking with efficiency. Yes, nice combinations. You know, she was looking for getting, using those combinations into the takedown, but now Rottenberger turned pace around, good knee onto the body, She's looking for the double leg here. She needs nice, and she secures it, but Stricker turns it around, landing into kind of like the half guard. 
That take down to a reversal once again, showing the aggressive nature of Kayla Stricker. Kayla Stricker, of course, happens to have the top mound, but will it be enough? Well, Stricker's inside Rottenberger's uh, guard right now. So what Rottenberger can do here is she's probably going to look into, uh, you know, attacking the arm bars here. She's looking for that arm. It looks like it. Getting those knees high on the shoulders. Now looking for a triangle, possibly a triangle she can get here. Sweep, but, you know, good work from Rottenberger here. She passed into kind of like the half guard here. And a half guard for MMA is really, really a good position where you can control your, your opponent and, and throw some ground and pound. By saying that, you must be impressed with the sophistication, the level of excellence that these young ladies are displaying here in just their first pro fight. Yes, actually, they, their transitions are, are really well, really good for this pro debut. Nice. Ruttenberger here needs to post that right hand and look to get up. Nice little chopping ground and pound that time by Stricker. Nice elbows by Ruttenberg. Taking advantage of each and every opportunity she can. They say this is a game of inches. You can see why. You know, very, very nice work by Ruttenberg. And, she, and uh, you know, she wants to do this full time. She doesn't want to be in the operating room. You but know, she, talk, she talks so eloquently about her grandmother being a nurse, and that's why she followed in the footsteps. I wanted to ask, is your grandmother a fighter like you? <laughs> Looking for that armbar Ruttenberg right here. Nice defense by Stricker. Nice ground and pound to finish up the round strong. Less than five seconds here in round number one remaining. And there it is, round number one. Both of these ladies put on Great back and forth, fight. Show. Great back and forth. Uh, I mean, you know, it, 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 Stricker had very good positions. She, she maintained control most of, the, most of the first round. What I liked about it is that not only did she maintain control, but it was the poise especially at times when she appeared to be in danger. And when you take a look at what is happening here in the corner, she's saying, yes, I recognize the mistakes I made, but these are the things that I have to do effectively. Let's take a look at some of the action here in round number one. And as you can see, on top is Stricker, and she is trying to do the ground and pound, but I love the elbows and the attitude that, of course, Roddenberry had. But look, she was able to make sure that she missed and took advantage of that, and that's why we have such a close first round. They had great transitions. And there you see our ring card girls and our cage girls for the night. We thank them for their assistance and what we are calling a good show. And the folks at Ticker and Pool Cat for doing what you need to do to make us all happy here and for all to see at the XFC. We're here in round number two. It's four minutes and 50 seconds left to go. We also want to say that XFC 50 is brought to you by Wing House. That's right. You know they're fan friendly and that atmosphere. Good feud and a beautiful service. It is Stricker against Rottenberry here in round number two. Nice, nice combination by, by Stricker there. But Rottenberry, she doesn't, you know, she's moving forward. She's looking for the fight. She's moving her head, but doesn't appear to have the hand nor foot speed to stay with a consistent game with Stricker. Right, I think she just needs to kind of get comfortable and let her let let herself, you know, feel the cage. I mean, Stricker, you know, she brings Stricker brings a, a black belt in karate, so that's where those those kicks are coming from. She's a very aggressive fighter, um, and she's been in this camp for three months. Jessica, when you speak of versatility in MMA, how do you define it? Well, you know, I mean, that's MMA, right? You there's you can use wrestling, you can use jiu-jitsu, you can use karate. You can, there's just it's just so versatile. And that's the beauty of the sport. Oh, nice kick to the body from Stricker. So yes, I I think Rottenberg is looking for the takedown, but she still hasn't 
she still hasn't found her. She punches, but she moves back. She, what she needs to do is punch and keep going and go for that takedown. Well, she's looking for the openings. Sometimes you can say very scripted in which she moves that approach, and putting that leg out there could have been dangerous. And once again, here you say Stricker oh. with the takedown, but Rottenberry right there on top. Nice takedown from Rottenberry. And right now, yes, she's she's in. She fell into that half guard. Um, she needs. This is a great position. This is one of my favorite positions uh, because you can hold your opponent and do some damage with the ground and pounds. We'll see. She looking for the mount position here. Yes, falling into the mount position. Great. Oh no, she's into the half. She's still in the half guard. But again, I, this is one of my favorite positions. You can hold your opponent down and throw some ground and pounds and, and damage. Make do some damage to open up spaces for a submission or you know or finish the fight there. It's the sophistication which these ladies are fighting here in this cage has been impressive when you consider these are pro debuts. I'm not talking about extensive amateur careers. I'm talking about individuals who look, oh, here we have. Beautiful transition. Transition there. From Rottenberg. Oh, she's looking for that rear naked choke. I think she's gonna, she looks like she's losing it. Um, she, nice elbows though. Nice defense from Stricker. Looks like Stricker's a little tired here. She's kind of using this time to kind of catch her breath. Make sure for more information, go to our website. It is there, xfcfightfxcfight.com. Jessica Aguilar and Ronnie Duncan here at Cage Side for you. This is our first fight. If you're just joining us, two very exciting young ladies, Stricker and Rottenberry. Yes, you know, uh, it, the fun fact about Rottenberg is that her boyfriend is also a pro rest, a pro, pro, pro car driver, car race driver. Yeah, he's in the truck series on NASCAR and hopes to move on. And I said, what would be the best thing for both of you? And she said, it would be so good that I win a major title and he wins. Nice. So now we see Stricker looking for that back. Has one hook in. Oh, nice. She is too, she is a little too high there. So nice from Rottenberry. Now she's back on top. She has to move her, or she, she has to move Stricker's back away from the cage so that she can, she can flatten her out. Man, this fight has had so many different degrees of elements, shifting tides. I'm so impressed, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with the, with the pace of this fight. Nice ground and pound by Rottenberry. Oh. Just when you think Rottenberry doesn't have much left, she displays that come to you attitude that believe it or not, I'm in here for real. And that's what she was talking about when we were speaking to her. She said, you know, I think you asked her what was the most important thing, and she said she shows up for herself every day. She's showing that today. Very competitive moving. and even fight so far. Always moving forward, always moving forward. Looking for the takedown here. What I, what I like is that she's able to stand her ground but they actually fight on the ground. That is the bell for the end of round number two. We're about to go into the third and final round. Yes, and, and it seems to me like the, uh, Stricker is, is a little tired on, and, you know, uh, from the looks of it. And I, I mean, if I would have to say, I, I have to say it's a one, they're tied. So whoever, you know, needs to come out they, whoever wants whoever wants it more will will see it in this round. Well, this could be something that happens because you have to determine who won round number two. You say it's one and one, but that riding and of course having an opportunity to get that guillotine or that rear necker choke, the mere fact that she lost it, but the aggressiveness that she showed to get in that position. Yeah, and she was coming forward, you know, she kept coming forward. She did get a, a takedown, submission attempt. These ladies have come with it, and it's nothing to it but to do it. In the words of my man, James Brown. <laughs> nothing to it but to do it, the late James Brown. Of course, we're talking Stricker, we're talking Rottenberry, and this is the third and final round. Once again, even before we get deep into the show, excellent angles from the crew on top, just being able to get some of the most intimate shots that you want to see in mixed martial arts. Kudos to you guys back in the truck.
Yeah, Roddenberry moving forward. She's looking for those openings. Nice combo from Strickland. But like you said, she never backs up. She's always moving forward. And I speak of Rebecca Rottenberry. I would like to see a little more head movement from Rottenberry coming in so that she can look for the takedown. See, that's... See. She needs to do more feints, you know. Stricker's doing it. Hand, Stricker's strong right hand, and that was, of course, putting Rottenberry moving backwards. I'm sorry, go right ahead. Stricker's doing a really good job of countering her footwork also moving around. But yeah, like we mentioned, Rottenberry doesn't stop moving forward. She doesn't stop moving forward, but what has happened is that Stricker has been able to take advantage of the counters. And when she does that, it looks like she is the better striker by far. Yeah, those jabs. I would like to see also a little more jabs coming in by, by Rottenberry. Jabs coming in for the takedown. Nice knee. She's coming in too square. I feel like she needs a little more movement, side movement. Has she expended too much energy, Kayla, here in round number three? We still have over three minutes left to go. Yeah, Kayla, you know, I feel like Kayla could be a little more aggressive. She's, she's just waiting for Rottenberry to see what she's doing to defend. She's got to be careful holding that left hand down. She just looked up at the clock, so you know she is conscious of the time. But a nice overhand, there it is, nice. right. That time by Rottenberg could definitely turn the tides of this fight. Nice. She's connecting well. See, the left hand is just too low. See what happens even when she throws it. And that is an opening for an overhand right and a two-punch combination. That's if she can get close enough and, of course, place that power right down the zone that could say, good night, young Kayla. You know, right now, they're both just standing in front of each other and kind of just going back and forth. Almost spinning back fist attempt. Nice combinations from Rottenberry. Nice double nice leg slam. take down. And take down that time by Rottenberger. Wow. Very nice, very nice take down. Landing and side control there. Once again, it's about conditioning. It's about energy. It's about fitness. This is the MMA, the best way you can see it, right here at XFC. Ronnie Duncan along with Jessica Aguilar. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. Look her up. Google her because she wants to get in the ring right now. You want to get in that cage, I know you do. I always <laughs> love to get in there, Rodney. You know, these ladies are, this is a great, this is a good fight. Queen B, you know, she's in side control right now. Let's see what she is looking for. She looks like she's probably looking to get a submission there, but she has her hips way too high. Yep, her hips are way too high. There you go, now she's in the half. Trying to get that leg lock at the same time. Yeah, looking, looking, she's looking. It looks like she wants that to get that arm triangle set up, that arm triangle. She can there, right? She can slide that knee right, uh, you know. She's just trying hard. Because slide Kayla's, Kayla's, Kay yeah. Mount, Kayla's, Kayla's half th guard is open, so. Absolutely. That opportunity is there for her to get to the mount position and rain some ground and pound from there. An opportunity for the open hand, take advantage, score some points, be impressive to the judges. Yes, you're riding her. Yes, you have the high mount. However, Beautiful. is it enough? And, and you know, it's a very frustrating position here for Caleb, but great trend, great defense here. Great defense here, landing in, in Rottenberry's guard now. But great, Rottenberg gets right up. Great, good job, amazing. So these are the, the last seconds of the fight. Who wants it more? Beautiful Rottenberg attacking, going for that takedown. That's it, that's it. It is over and you talk about two young ladies and they're both raising their hands. No one resisted. 
they know to one another, I was in a fight. My first fight, my pro debut. I had it before the stars. I had it before the lights and the cameras right here in Lakeland, Florida at the RP Funding Center. Congratulations to these, both ladies. These both ladies, tough as nails. I mean, this is a really, really hard fight to judge. Let's take a look at some action here from the third and final round as both ladies were able to take advantage. Once again, that's striking, but did any of those shots land effectively or perfectly? Absolutely, but there was that leg kick, and that leg kick led to, of course, this, the takedown, and it was one that, of course, she was able to ride her for most of round number three. Absolutely, Kayla, you know, her, her countering connected, but, that takedown from Rottenberry, that was that was tough. Ah, uh, somebody liked it. It's the Big E from the WWE. Hey, man, brother, I got to see you back in the ring. Yeah, you're looking pretty good. I think you know what it's all about. It's about the XFC. Hey, look, they who look were like impressed? Fighters. Guess who was impressed more? I'm talking about the one and only. I'm talking about the young lady who knows all about giving up those scores. Yeah, that's Mr. Lambert. He says, let's go, Ronnie. He says, I'm sitting up here with, of course, some superstars. And look, got a nice little shiner. How'd you get that? At the XFC. That's right. In my pro debut fight, what a beautiful platform for this next generation. You know, when you speak of the mere fact of what these ladies can do, it has been impressive. Let's get ready to make sure that everything is fine. The referee, he has the two ladies. He has them by the hand. Let's go to Al. All right, folks, make some Ryan. noise for both of these Nicole. warriors tonight in their professional debut. And now I go to the judges' scorecards for the decision. Judge Elicio Rodriguez scores about 29-28 for Stricker. <laughs> Judge Michael Tate scores about 29-28 in favor of Miss Rotenberry. And Judge Jason Grainer scores about 29-28 in favor of your winner by split decision. And now, undefeated, Kayla the Bulldog Stricker. Oh, how close it was. She narrowly got it, but by split decision, Kayla Stricker, and Kayla Stricker was the more exciting striker in this fight. When you consider what she was able to do and how well she was able to do it. A very happy team for the young lady, Kayla Stricker, from Pace, Florida. She can go home and say, you know what? I want my first one. And where does she do it? At the XFC. And now she gets an opportunity to talk to Johnny. Here's All right, Johnny. Let's get a word now. You had a little bit of your entire arsenal on display tonight. The strikes, the grappling, and a decision victory in your pro debut. Is this how you drew it up? Um, I did expect it to go all rounds. I know Rebecca was super tough, and I knew she was going to be a tough opponent. Um, man, I just I thank God for allowing me to be here, for allowing me to fight, and just for allowing me to be healthy. Well, speaking of being here and being healthy, you've had quite a journey. You stepped away for a couple of years to become a proud mother of two. Then you had to recover from reconstructive knee surgery. Speak to how special it is to just be in this cage right now. Oh, it is very special. We've been working to go pro for a long time now. I had a few setbacks, ACL construction, handbrake. Um, getting back was a journey, but I'm here and I'm blessed. I'm healthy and I can't wait to see where the future holds. Well, we can't wait to see more. Congratulations, Kayla Stricker, her professional victory debut with XFC. Well, thanks a lot, Johnny LaCroix, though, and of course, Kayla Stricker. What a champion she may be in the future. You think you want some of that smoke? Uh, you know, this is, <laughs> this is great. This is great for her, you know, using this, this platform, All having right, such a platform we are like gonna keep the action rolling. is amazing. At this time, if you're ready for the action, make some noise. That's right. Our next battle is scheduled in the middleweight division. And if you will, please welcome to the blue corner, Thomas Lane. All right, Thomas Lane comes in with an undefeated record of 3-0. and They say the hometown is Belmont, North Carolina. Yes, he's part of the new generation right here on the XFC 50. Ronnie Duncan along with Jessica Algalar. And we are ready for Dylan O'Sullivan. And we are talking about all of these guys. 
because here he comes, Dylan O'Sullivan. That's my man. He's out of Johnson City, Tennessee, and he was 5-0. and oh. And he says, you ain't seen nothing till you see me in the cage. What about his attitude? You know, calling, he calls himself the soul, the soul snatcher, Ronnie. So, like, he is ready. He's on a five-win streak. First round finishes. Yeah, I mean, right. he's he's ready. He comes from a great camp. He'll flip. We're going to be ready with Big E after this fight is over, okay? So when we speak of what is going on, I said, man, what I love about you is your braids, bro. Who did the braids? He said, I got them done right here. And it was so good. He wanted to give the love to that. You know, I love his attitude. His father, of course, born in Ireland. And of course, he is of Ireland, Irish descent. But he's had a knee injury. And the mere fact that he had a severe knee injury, he was able to come back from that. And this guy says, you ain't seen nothing till you see me. At 5-0, and oh, he says, the thing I do is knock the other opponent out. He's looking forward to his opponent. And of course, the guy that he's taking on, and that'll be Thomas Lane. That is going to be something very special. Now let's get it for Ryan Nico, who's ready for our next fighter to get ready to come into the ring. Let's go to the one, the only, the beautiful one, Detroit, Miss St. Louis, Ryan Nico. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you will, welcome to the red corner, Thomas Lane. All right. Thomas Lane. This is exciting. This fight's going to be exciting, Ronnie. This, oh, They're both fight. undefeated fighters, both hungry, great camps. I mean, so much talent. If Cal Poly and Thomas Lane seem the same, they are. One of the most uh, celebrated and decorated wrestlers in college wrestling. This young man's got the cauliflower ears to go ahead and shed the tears. But I'm telling you right now, at 3-0, and he's looking forward to it. And the thing about it is that they both have different expertise. When you speak to, of course, O'Sullivan, he says he wants to stand up. But when you talk to this man, he wants to ground you and take you to the ground because of his wrestling technique. How important are both to victories for either of these gentlemen? So important. And, you know, like I said, they both come from great training camps you know this young man mr thomas lane he's like wrestling you know royalty he's he's been wrestling this is part of his this is in his blood you know he he wrestled his first trainer was alan aquinta you know he's been wrestling back in he, now he's training with chris weidman and he corners chris weidman it's it's just amazing talent and O'Sullivan, you know, comes from, again, I was saying, Killcliffe team down in, in Deerfield Beach. I mean, Henry Hoof, Greg Jones, all of those guys are amazing. So they're, this fight's going to bring it. All right. They're ready. They're in the cage. Let's go back up to our cage announcer, Ryan Nico. Ryan, tell us what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, this next attraction of the evening is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Our judges scoring the bout cage side, Jed O'Connor, Michael Tate, and Eli Eliseo Rodriguez. Our third man in charge of the action, Larry Folsom. And now we introduce our fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, he enters the ring with a perfect record. Five victories, zero defeats. At age 29, he stands at six feet, one inches tall. He weighed 185 pounds. Representing Johnson City, Tennessee, here is Dylan, the Soul Snatcher O'Sullivan. And now, fighting out of the red corner. He enters the ring with a clean record. Three victories, no defeats. He's 26 years old and stands at six feet, two inches tall. He weighed 185.4 pounds. Representing Belmont, North Carolina, here is Thomas Freight Train Lane. And our third man in the ring, Larry Folsom, gives final instruction. Hey guys, we went over the rules in the back. Do you have any questions? Any questions from you? If y'all want to touch gloves, do it now. Let's come out fighting. You know, you have a saying when you speak of the new generation of MMA, you don't blink. 
Well, Jessica, look at the records. Look at the age. Your course of starting is O'Sullivan, three years older, but the sides between the two almost identical. But the one thing O'Sullivan tells me he has, I got the knockout punch, and that is the eraser. Right. Well, you know, this is a great matchup. Uh, kudos to the matchmaker, matchmaking here. This is high level, you know, MMA. Tom is looking, looking for that single leg takedown right away. He, he gets that single leg. Now let's see what he's, he's gonna do. Well, he went to Cal Poly. He was a decorated wrestler. He is, of course, in the black. And the trunks yep. of the United he States, as like well he... as the Irish flag. That is, of course, O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan looking like he, he's going for that Kimura. Looks like has one hook in, but he can, he's really high. I think Thomas here, he can just, you know, uh, get that head out of there and go into grab the back, land some ground and pound after he gets out of there. Well, the one place that we know that Thomas Lane is comfortable is on the ground. He is a wrestler. And this if is, he can ride you, he will. This is his bread and butter. I mean, this is his place. Like, you know, the takedowns. Now looking for the back, Thomas. He is a good... O'Sullivan trying to shake him off here, but uh, uh, Thomas has that that lock. Oh, I think he has that. I think he has that rear naked choke here. And this oh, early tap out! Wow, what a he win for winner, Thomas! An early Lane. tap out! What wow. a win for Thomas! Wow, amazing! Wow, amazing win for the Thomas! Top of his head. Yeah, got that, got that hook in, got that hook in. Oh, oh wow, like they're jawing at each other. Because Thomas Lane came up and said, you didn't think I was much of anything, and I got the victory. Thomas Lane, that fight is over. That was a wow. submission. That was a rear naked choke. That came fast. And that takedown came fast, too. I mean, o O'Sullivan said, you know, like, I hope that he stands with me, but that's what Thomas said. I'm going to use what... I'm strong at, and that was his wrestling, and he That's did exactly just that. I mean, when you're talking about a celebrated Game wrestler, plan. he wanted that. I would stand right now because of the way that this fight ended and because of the simple fact that this was O'Sullivan's first loss. If they decide to run it back in Detroit, that will be nice to see. And we've got more action coming your way at the XXC. We're in Detroit. We're also back here, and the dates are round for all to see because May 31st, that's going to be a big right, day. Fans, you got to clap it up for both warriors for entering the cage tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, clap it up for both warriors for entering the cage tonight. Yeah. Our referee in charge of the bout calls it to a halt at 1 minute 22 seconds in round number one. Your winner by rear naked choke submission is Thomas Frank Trey. Lane. Here it is. Lane gets the victory. And that's what it's all about. And just the mere fact he was able to, to do that says a lot. You know, he didn't come in as a favorite. He came in as the underdog. Everyone thought this was Thomas Lane's fight. He had the bravado at the weigh-in. We talked to him. But when it's all said and done, it's all about that wrestling technique. And he said, this is what I wanted. But this is the kind of fight that can elevate you to a new horizon. And it's all about that. And he says, if I can move here, this could get me closer to my goal. And that's what we intend to do here. A platform and a way for some of these fighters to move on to the next highest level and to be able to be in a position where they can be happy and say, I started my career at the XFC. Remember, the motto is simple. The new generation. Now let's go up to Johnny Quasto, who's standing by. To call my special guest a renaissance man would be an understatement. Former WWE champion, two-time intercontinental champion, eight-time tag team champion with the New Day, and of course, former NXT champion. On top of that, you've seen him on your favorite college football kickoff shows and is the co-creator of an amazing animated educational project for children, Our Heroes Rock. 
and he's on the board for the new regime at XFC. My man, Big E. E, how does it feel to be at your first live mixed martial arts event and be part of the XFC team? Man, it's incredible. I appreciate it, Johnny. Uh, so I've been an MMA fan for many, many years, but I can't believe it finally took me being here in Lakeland, just down the road from uh, my home where I grew up. Uh, it's been incredible, and I really believe in the XFC, this new ownership. Uh, you know, Jeff Lambert is someone I got to work with when I was with the Michigan Panthers. I got to be the MC last year, and he approached me with this idea, and it was not something that I really had on my vision board but as soon as I met with him I met with the board I was so impressed with what XFC is building with the the vision with the cards we're putting together we have a great fight night right, right now with Hannah Goldie with Pearl with Tim Johnson some big names from UFC and Bellator I'm excited about the direction of the XFC the fact that the XFC is back under this new leadership I'm, I'm really excited about being a part of this team now speaking of being on the team I mean everyone knows you're a natural athlete powerlifting star football star, one of the biggest superstars in WWE, I mean, people might like to see you get in the cage at some point. That, first of all, I'm coming off of a broken neck, uh, so that's not happening. Also, I have so much respect for the men and women who put their lives on the line doing this. It's, you know, there's a, there's a certain grind when it comes to what we do in our industry, but what these men and women do, having to learn and understand kickboxing, boxing, uh, you know, jujitsu, wrestling, uh, just every element, Muay Thai. Uh, I have so much respect for what they do. It's a different kind of mental toughness. It's a different kind of grind. Uh, so yes, and also, I'd be a heavyweight at five foot ten and change, giving you know, fighting guys who would be six four, six six. No, thank you. No, thank you. Well, I just want to say, last time you and I worked together, you were convincing me to gyrate my hips in front of thirteen thousand people in the have center you, of the ring. So have you loosen them up. Are they still? No, not at all. Okay. So I think this was a lot calmer. It was yeah. a little more enjoyable for both of us. Right, 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 right. But we gotta. I still want to make sure you're stretching. I'm gonna work on your your hip protocol. I want to make sure the hips are loose. Next time I see you, I need I need them real loose, okay. the swivel. Uh, but it is it is a beauty to be here at the XFC. We can save the hip swiveling. I'm not going to put you on the spot right now. Or wear sweatpants. Yeah, next time. Yeah, next time. Re real loose sweatpants. Always Biggie, a it's an honor to have you, man. Thank you. Thank you, my man. Back to you, Ronnie and Jess. All right, thanks a lot. He's one of my favorite people. I'm talking about the Big E. But now another favorite person, the one, the only, I'm talking Ryan Nico. What's up next, Ryan? Let's take a photo real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout of the evening is scheduled in the 130-pound catch weight division. And at this time, I need you to welcome to the cage, Tanay Garcia. Tanay Garcia. That is the name that has gone throughout this family for years. She is the third Tide Garcia, a grandma and an auntie. Oh, we look good. Old name, Tide Garcia. And when you speak of this young lady, she has an interesting story because she was able to finally get into a bullet. No, that was great. And now she is an MMA fighter. What about that? What a story. I mean, Garcia is fighting at Aguero's House of Warriors out of Alvin, Texas, and usually flights in the, in the flyweight division uh, here, but, you know, they had a, a little agreement and now fighting at catchweight at 130, so it should be exciting. You know, you see her, and she looks like a little young lady who can't eat, but she was telling us she's got some big eating habits. What did she tell us? She had some muffins she had to do right after the weigh-in. She had, she had about <laughs> 10 muffins to eat, she said. Uh, you know, big, she said her hobbies. We asked her what her hobbies were other than MMA, and she said she's a foodie and she loves to eat. So, yes, that's, uh, that's one of her hobbies. She doesn't look like it, though. This is a new, this is a new generation. Again, speaking about the new generation, it just keeps coming up because that's what we have here. Uh, and, and this is a prime example. Garcia, you know, 20 years old. She's, this is her third professional fight and in the XFC here. I mean, what an honor. It's just like being, fighting here. I, again, I, it, it, it's, I feel jealous, but in a good way because, I, you know, I also love seeing uh, platforms like this for young talent like, like Garcia and, and Goldie. Let's go to Ryan Nico. And now, making her way to the red corner, make some noise for Hannah Goldie. Hannah Goldie is no stranger to the MMA. She has been at the UFC, and now she looks at this as a redemption tour to come back 
and say, Hannah's not done. That's right. You know, she she's uh, this is she's using. She says she's never been more. I mean, she hasn't been as relaxed in a fight for a long time. She doesn't remember. She's she's happy. This is her hometown. She's has her her child here. Her child and 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 her uh, her ex husband supporting her. So she's she's in good spirits right now. And she spoke so highly about the mere fact that her son is here, and how she and her ex have worked so hard together to make sure that even though things didn't work out for them, they will always work out for a son. And I love that, especially when you think of a family and how important it is. Just want to say a special hello to Grandmaster Greg Mayall of Cleveland, Ohio, a man who has taught me so much about mixed martial arts. He is, of course, a Hall of Famer, but when you speak of this young lady, she's ready. She's ready. She's, you know, comes from Fusion X Performance. Uh, here, this is their hometown with Julian Williams as our head coach, uh, who's, you know, trains a lot of top fighters in the sport. So uh, I'm sure she's well prepared and, as I said, ready to go at catch weight at 130. And I think these, this fight's going to start out, I mean, it, like I said, fireworks. Ryan Nico with the introductions. Fight fans, this cage match is scheduled in a 130-pound catch weight division. Our three judges scoring the bout cage side, Jason Granier, Jed O'Connor, and Michael Tate. Our third man in charge of the action, David Baggett. And now we introduce our fighters. First fighting out of the blue corner. She enters the ring with two victories, only one defeat. At age 20, she stands five feet, five inches tall. She scaled 129.4 pounds, representing Alvin, Texas. Here is Ty Day Garcia. And now, fighting out of the red corner. She is a veteran of 10 professional MMA battles, six victories. She is 31 years old and stands at five feet, four inches tall. She weighs 128.6 pounds, representing Orlando, Florida. Here is Hannah 24K Goldie. And our third man in the ring, David Baggett, gives further instruction. There you got Hannah Goldie going up against right, ladies, Todd A. Garcia. In the back, got any questions? Any questions? Touch glove. All right, let's hook them up. Both of these young ladies are ready. And when you look at it, six and four, two and one, you know that this is going to be a competitive battle. Throw the records out of the book. All I can tell you is that Ty Day is ready. And at 65, with a reach advantage of five inches, this could be a fight for her. Absolutely, I, I agree, Ryan, Ronnie. I'm telling you, this fight's gonna start quick. And these ladies didn't wait. One thing we can say is that Goldie is in magnificent shape. But I have to ask you, just on the eye test alone, when we consider the weigh-in, does it appear that she was able to rehydrate and get even more pounds Absolute, in this fight? Absolutely, Ronnie. I mean, you could see the, the, the weight difference uh, there. I mean, Hannah, you know, is really muscular, but we'll see how, how that affects her car cardio, because that can also affect your, your cardio. Are you impressed with the defense that Tade Garcia is trying to apply? Yes. With her back to the cage. Yes, what she needs to do here is circle and, and, and uh, she needs to circle of, so that she gets out of that position because Goldie, seem, Goldie seems very comfortable here with a good head positioning here, landing those knees. Yep, you hear Garcia's corner saying circle and she's trying but uh, Goldie's pressure. Goldie may have the pressure, but both women are exerting plenty of energy here. It doesn't look like there's much, but when you're tying someone up for this length of time, it can have some ill effects. 
absolutely this uh, for goldie this uh, you know trying to hold somebody down like that and control somebody uses a lot of energy and, and like i said if you, you she's very muscular so she's using a lot a lot of energy here nice knee from goldie so what goldie can even do here is look for the takedown is she trying to preserve energy because she's gained? Oh, nice elbow. Some weight. Yeah, that elbow was nice to come out of, but tight end is still there. Tight end with the jab, trying to move in, the left and the right. But another takedown, this time by Goldie. And an opportunity for a little ground and pound. He is falling into Garcia's guard. See what nice ground and pound. Garcia, what she's looking for here. She, you know, she mentioned, uh, Garcia said, wherever the fight goes, she's comfortable. So I feel like here she should try, she should try to look for, for getting back up. This is a very good camera angle of what we are seeing. And of course, the attempts of the ground and pound this time by Goldie. Yeah, Goldie having really good base here, connecting with some good ground and pound. She, Garcia needs to be careful there. She has, could go for a heel hook, Hannah. She, she has to be careful because of what happened earlier tonight before we went on live, how a fight was stopped because limited ground and pound, what we saw, but they stopped it here. The commission did. Right. Good posturing from Hannah here. Throwing some ground and pound. She looks like she has a really good base, really strong position. We're here in round number one of this three round contest between these two winners, Goldie and Garcia. Nice. We're coming up to a minute left to go here in round number one. Looking, to, looking for that arm, Tidy. Garcia looking for that arm, but really good defense from, from Goldie. If we're talking about the domination and the positive play here in round number one, it's all Goldie as she grounds and pounds, or at least attempts to do so in a positive way. Yes, yeah, she's controlling. She's controlling her really well here. She's looking for the armbar here, Goldie, in the last seconds of the fight. Let's see if she can secure that. So, Looking for transition for, to the triangle here. Nice transition here, but uh, Garcia has her arm in, but now she's going into like Omoplata. Could be a straight arm bar here with this view. Oh, straight arm bar. Nice transitions. Would be enough time. Let's see, not enough time. Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. See some young fans here. All about Tide, the gorilla. So I hear the coach saying she needs to get more, she needs to get busier. She's te he's telling Garcia, he needs to get, she needs to get busier, which I, I, I agree. One thing that I think in reference to Tide, how she can turn this fight around, it's gonna happen with her striking because Hannah is not moving very much. Her head is very straight. And if she goes ahead and takes advantage of that, she could end up having round two as her friend. Yes, and Hannah looks so much, she just, so much stronger. She looks like she's controlling her. Once it goes to the ground, I don't, I don't see Garcia being able to do anything. So I agree with you, Ronnie. I think that she should keep that this fight standing. It's going to be interesting to see how it all ends up. This is, of course, Lakeland, Florida. You are watching the XFC, the place to be here at the RP Funding Center. Getting ready for round number two. Let's see exactly what happens if we have a rejuvenated young Ty Day Garcia, who by most accounts lost round number one. Nice high kick from, from Hannah. Nice one two from Garcia. She has to take advantage of the only advantage that she has right now in this fight. 
Remember, there is a reach advantage, and it's all for tight end. Nice back and forth with those low kicks, both ladies. Another low kick from Garcia. Very little head movement right now by Golden. Right, and I, you know, I feel Garcia like she's felt everything she needed to feel in the first round. I feel like now she can, she can, you know, attack more and, and feel more comfortable knowing that she felt the, you know, hand of power and what she can do. Nice. My back fist that missed, but she's trying to become more aggressive standing up, and that's what we have with the young lady in the all-black attire. Yeah, Hannah, you know, Hannah feels really comfortable with this position, looking to, to take Garcia down. Good body control here. Yeah, this is a this is a really frustrating position, and good takedown from Hannah. Super, you know, looks super smooth. What would be your strategy right now, or what would you be doing, or what would you be telling your fighter to do if they were in that position that Hannah currently holds? Well, you know, Hannah, it, she's she's doing a really good job, and and right now you could see Garcia trying to defend, and she needs to she needs to watch out. What Garcia needs to do is try to scoot out. And oh, that ground and pound is coming, and she's becoming extremely aggressive, and it's almost getting to the point that she has nowhere to go. Great elbows, great ground and pound from Hannah. She has a high mount here. She can, you know, attack the, the, the triangle for mount. She can attack the arm bar. I mean, you know, she could finish the fight here if she if she wanted to. If I was, I was in the corner of Hannah, I would say rain, ground and pound. So I must ask. She talked to you and she talked about her future and what this opportunity means in the XFC. We're seeing her demonstrate this because she is doing it with a ferocious approach that says, I am not done yet. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. And you see Garcia, you know, she is doing her best as well. Uh, what Garcia needs to do here is use that cage to try, to try to get up, try to get out of this position. It's a really hard position to get out of the mount, especially with someone as strong as, as, as Hannah. She's, she has her base really low. Um, she has to hit those escape. And you're, you're gonna have to, you know, uh, take some punches here to get out of this position. But, you know, Hannah has a lot of pressure here on the mount position. You know, high arms here. She can finish with strain arm bar or you know, she she can finish even with with ground pound, with ground and pound. She is getting instructions from her corner and there's very little she can do. And I'm talking of Tide Garcia. Yeah, and like I said, Hannah looks so strong here. She has a really good base. She's low in that mound position. Looks like she's, you know, Garcia's bleeding out of her nose from those elbows or that ground and pound that Hannah's been raining down on her. Hannah here looking for that arm triangle. Beautiful, good composure here from Hannah. Oh, this could be this could be the, the the end of the fight. I mean, we still have a minute left, but she's looking for the arm triangle here. Beautiful, beautiful from Hannah. The more pressure applied here, there could be a tap out coming our way. And no, Garcia gets out of that. Great work. She's trying. She's trying using the cage, but it's it's hard because Hannah has a, a good low base. In the accumulation of punches, you can see the blood starting to spew from the face of Garcia. Yeah, there's nothing Garcia can do now. Uh, you know, she, I think she's right now is just defense, and here Hannah's going for the armbar, which is really tight here. A really tight arm bar. Oh, wow. Garcia gets out of that. And the saved by the bell again. Oh, wow. 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 She tapped out. The referee saw it. Wow. And I thought it was saved by the bell. I thought she was going to be saved by the bell because I thought she was going to pull that elbow out. But wow, what a what a what a victory for Hannah.
Wow. Anna did her thing, strength over matter and technique, and she is calling for one young man to join her, and that's her son. A victory for him to see, but a victory for her. Tossed aside by the UFC, embraced by the XFC, she says, this is my second journey to a championship destiny, and it could be all for her. And now she awaits her son as they pick up, and they have that moment that she's been wanting to have with him for quite some time, that he can enjoy it beautiful. at his age. So beautiful, that's great. And for, for Hannah, I mean, this is, this is an important fight. This is a huge fight for her, this victory. It's breaking that cycle, you know, that she had. And, and it's just such a great moment for her. Congratulations to her. It has been one of those nights where dreams do come true. Promises are out. But now let's get up to Ryan Nico, who has the final word on the winner tonight. All right, fight fans, let's clap it up for both warriors for entering the cage this evening. And at this time, our referee in charge, Mr. Larry Folsom, calls the bout to a halt at four minutes and 58 seconds in round number two. Your winner by armbar submission, Hannah 24 K. Cody. There it is. She's a winner by submission by tap out. A new record is now seven and four. And Johnny LaCroixo is standing by to talk to the winner as she has her son. You showed a little bit of everything. You dominated control time, precise strikes, and of course, the submission victory. And this little man right next by your side, exactly what you wanted. Honestly, my goal tonight was just to show that I'm well-rounded and I just wanted to put it together tonight. It's been really hard for me to do that in the UFC and I've said over and over again, I'm grateful for being released so that I could get better. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get better, I'm gonna keep getting better. You certainly did that. You proved a lot tonight. What's next for Hannah Goldie? I mean, shit, I heard we're coming back to Lakeland in June or July, so what's good? All right, Hannah Goldie, ready for more success with XFC. How do you feel, buddy? Good. Perfect answer. You gotta love the moment. Coming up next, we got a really good fight for you. One person said it's the fight of the night. I'm talking about the one and only Jessica Aguilar, Emmanuel Sanchez, and Daniel Salas. It's going to be a Mexican warfare. Yes, sir. These two, I mean, El Matador y El Cazador, the killer and the hunter. You know, it's it's going to be it's going to be fireworks. These two, they're two vets, and and with a lot of experience. One traveled here, Daniel Salas traveled here from Mexico City. Uh, you know. It just, it's just gonna be a great fight. Well, as my broadcast partner would tell me, and you don't argue with the lady All who's right, been in Bellator fans. or UFC. This next attraction this of the evening the is fight. scheduled the in the 160 pound catch weight division. And at this time, I need you to welcome to the blue corner, Daniel Salas. There it is. Daniel Salas, loved talking to him at the weigh-in, came in with such a great spirit, and you like the little blue streak in his hair? <laughs> I love it, I love it. That's, you know, that's his, that's his swag, you know? He has his little swag, so I love it. You know, coming again, like I said, from, from Mexico City, 28 fight vet, fighting against Sanchez, El Matador, Bellator vet, and he's looking for finish. He, they, they're both looking for a finish. Both looking for a finish. This is Sanchez's first time with a new team, with a new coach out in Houston, Texas. 